the beginning of the show today, I said for Enlist Soybeans, we talk about the successes and the failures. And you may be wondering what those failures are. We'll get to that in just a minute. Let me first explain what Enlist is. It is a newer technology that allows a farmer to spray glyphosate, glufosinate, which would be Liberty, and then also the new 2,4-D, just the new 2,4-D. That would be called Enlist 1. So we're super excited about this particular trait because it's actually been planted on our farm for about six years now. We love the yields. There's a lot of potential with this, but we just want to make sure you know the downsides to it as well before you go planting a bunch of Enlist soybeans on your farm. Certainly we expect Enlist acres to increase again this year due to the success that Brandon's talked about here just a little bit in the past few years. Growers are excited about many things with those varieties, but I just want to say this, here's the first caution I would give you. This trait, as Brian mentioned, has tolerance to glufosinate or Liberty, glyphosate or Roundup, and this new 2,4-D. So you may be thinking, well, hey, I don't have to worry about a pre-emerge herbicide. I got all these options. I can spray post-emerge. And they are great options post. But I'm just going to say this, when we've had weed control issues across the country with Enlist, it's almost always come where we either didn't get a pre-emerge residual on or we didn't get enough rainfall to activate a residual product that got put on after planting. So we want you to use the three pre strategy. This is something that will make you more yield and also take away a lot of the stress and a lot of the risk that you may be taking with Enlist if you're relying on post-emerge control. And by three pre's, we mean Metribuzin, a PPO, either Valor or Authority, and one of the yellows like Prowl or Trifluralin. Okay, one of the other things that we've seen in terms of a failure, a problem with the Enlist system, is the antagonism toward the volunteer corn herbicides. So if you're going to rotate, most likely, you're following corn with soybeans. You go out there, you plant Enlist soybeans, you got some volunteer corn, you say, oh, no big deal, I'll throw in my Fusillade, I'll throw in my Secure, or whatever it is. Unfortunately, though, there is a lot of antagonism between 2,4-D and any of those grass herbicides. What we found is the Assure 2 and Secure, that whole family, it just doesn't work very well. Some people will say Fusillate also doesn't work very well. I would agree with that to some degree. When you're mixing with Enlist. When you're mixing with Enlist. But here's how we encourage you to get around that. First of all, spray Liberty first. Okay, Liberty will probably kill a lot of the volunteers and you could throw a volunteer corn herbicide in with Liberty. So do that first. If you are going to spray Enlist 1, whether it's with Roundup or, or not, doesn't matter, we would probably tell you bump the rate a lot. Use the highest labeled rate instead of the lowest labeled rate on whatever volunteer corn herbicide you want to use, and then make sure you're throwing some crop oil along with it just to spike up that activity of the volunteer corn herbicide. The other challenge that we have spraying Enlist post-emerge is some of the tank mixability, especially when we look at different forms of glyphosate. When we're mixing glyphosate in the tank with Enlist 1 and we're putting in some ammonium sulfate to try to make that Roundup and the Enlist 1 work better, all of a sudden we've seen some tank mixing issues. Now, here's where we've seen the problems. We've seen problems where we're using high rates of ammonium sulfate, so 17 pounds per 100 gallons or more. So one thing you could do is you could consider, well, maybe I'll just cut the AMS back to the lower end of the labeled rate at eight and a half pounds per 100 gallons of water. But the other solution to this, and I feel the better solution, is just adding more water to the tank. If you're spraying 10 gallons of water per acre or less, well, that's where we've seen most of these problems. When we get to 15 gallons of water per acre or even 20, we've hardly ever seen these types of compatibility issues. Okay, and I don't like that either. Honestly, if it's me, I would go 10 gallons of water to the acre. I just wouldn't go down to the five or the seven. Once you get to at least 10, that helps. But the big thing is put lots of water in first, get your ammonium sulfate in, get your Enlist in, then throw the glyphosate in at the very end, just as you're finishing up the tank, then throw that in. Usually that makes the difference. I'd also tell you compatibility agents haven't really worked to fix this whole thing. So you can't just say, well, I'll just throw a compatibility agent in. That'll solve my problem like it does for everything else. For whatever reason, it doesn't work with this particular combo. Earlier, I'd mentioned spray Liberty first, then spray the Enlist 1 and glyphosate later. Part of the reason why I want you to do that is spray coverage. This is another issue that we've seen in the Enlist system. People haven't been used to spraying Liberty. They go out and spray Liberty when everything is big and they can't get good coverage on the weed and they go, well, that Liberty doesn't work. No, Liberty's fantastic. There are no resistant weeds. It's great. 
but you have to have good spray coverage. Well, you're not going to get good spray coverage when the beans are chest high and you're trying to blow that Liberty down underneath to kill a one inch tall weed. It's not going to work. So spray your Liberty early when you can get good coverage, then come back with your Enlist 1 and glyphosate later. And by the way, Enlist 1 and Roundup are labeled up to R2, that's full flower. Liberty is only labeled to R1, that's first flower. So it makes way more sense to spray Liberty first, then follow with your Enlist 1 and Roundup later. And when we talk about this two pass approach, that already may be disappointing you. Oh no, I thought this was my one pass thing. No, it might not be. And it might even be a three pass where you put down the pre, come back in with the Liberty early, and then come back with Enlist and Roundup later. And also, Brian mentioned Liberty has no resistant weeds. We do have resistant weeds, obviously, to Roundup, but there are also some resistant weeds to 2,4-D. That's why putting those two products together helps us with that, where at least we've got one mode of action that's going to be effective controlling the weeds. All right, in terms of varieties, Darren, what's the big watch out with Enlist varieties? The thing I would be concerned about is just making sure you get all the defensive traits that you need. This is a relatively new platform. It's been out now for a little while, but there still are some varieties that are great yielders, but they may miss brown stem rot, or they may not be great on white mold or sudden death syndrome. So make sure you're talking to your seed supplier about, hey, do I need to add a seed treatment for SDS? Do I need to watch out where I'm planting this bean because it doesn't have a brown stem rot resistant gene or something like that. Just make sure you're still picking defensive traits. Don't just get excited and say, you know, I want to go enlist. The weed control is great. The weed control is great, but do be careful when you're picking your varieties to make sure you get the ones that fit best on your soils. One last thing, Enlist Duo versus mixing your own Enlist One and Roundup. The reason why most people go Enlist One plus Roundup is it's cheaper. Name brand Roundup is at the lowest price in history, so that's the reason why a lot of people are mixing that together rather than just buying the pre-mixed Enlist Duo, which has a different type of glyphosate together with Enlist. So if you want to use that, you certainly can. Either way is fine. But whatever you do, I guess the big thing here that we wanted to tell you today is Enlist soybeans are great. It's just you've got to be a little bit careful in terms of what you use for herbicides when you spray them. There are certainly some watchouts, but the varieties are good. Just make sure you're picking the right defensive traits. But will the Enlist trait allow you to kill our Weed of the Week with those herbicide options? We'll talk about that coming up later in the show. <music>